Okay, good morning. The recording has started, so let us start with our lecture as well. I'll just uh, bring up the last slide. And I believe this is the last slide that we stopped on last time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Right, so uh, we stopped at development of agricultural ge agricultural geography in India, and uh, before we proceed with the other aspects, I believe that uh, we need to go into a very interesting part of agriculture, and that is the history of agriculture. Well, archaeology believes that uh, agriculture originated in about uh, 7000 BC or 8000 BC in the Middle East in the, during the Neolithic period, that is. Okay, now, uh, I don't know, but uh, I would say if they were Neolithic, this there, and the second point, the Mesolithic, this there. Normally, when you speak about uh, paleo environments, the climate as the human development as the Ekhada goes teach teen bhagzar padai chi mantli. That it is basically old, medial, and new. Uh, you must have studied the geological time scale in geomorphology. The Suda, you'll see ki when we divide it into eras, okay, you have the Paleozoic, you have the Mesozoic, and then you have the Cenozoic. Cenozoic is the new. Okay, here, in fact, you could remember it that new means new. Okay, so the old Stone Age. Now, Stone Age, the Neolithic, Lithic. Okay, lithography is basically stone. So when man was using stones, as far as his uh, uh, purposes was concerned, Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic. Okay, this is how you understand it by uh, logic as such. Okay, though we keep on saying that uh, uh, agricultural revolution originated around ten thousand years ago. Probably we are saying 8,000 years before Christ and 2,000 years after that. Uh, in that context, it makes a total of 10,000 years in all. So uh, probably agriculture started only when the, uh, I would say the uh, stone age was coming towards an end and <clears throat> Uh, probably human civilization was moving into what was to be the Iron Age or Bronze Age or whatever it is. But uh, we are speaking about agriculture here and uh, in the Mesolithic Age, okay, the middle, that's the Middle Stone Age as such. We find that uh, human beings were using small tools of stones. Okay, And uh, uh, there was a slight change, not everybody, but uh, there was a slight change of... Uh, human beings moving from uh, food gathering to uh, food growing okay so it's it all started in mesolithic during the neolithic that's the period that followed after that uh, the entire process of evolution of uh, man connected with agriculture can be divided into three stages first stage is where man becomes conscious he starts looking around of his environment and uh, he lives on uh, let us say fruits and uh, he made implements out of stones to hunt animals and engage himself in uh, fishing okay and uh, he evolved a, a, a state of clothing i would rather say he wore the hides of animals and leaves and trees and it is also believed that he learned the use of fire that's the first stage. As far as the second stage is concerned, some 10,000 years ago, okay, that is again the close of the Neolithic period as such, man began to cultivate the land and produce fruit grains. And uh, it is this period in which collecting of food grains from plants that produce the grains happened. But the stage of sowing the seed and harvesting uh, was not that much. Uh, ती कुठेतरी सापडते आमुक एक ठिकाण आमुक एक ठिकाणी आमुक एक प्रकारची 
वनस्पती अनु अमुक एक प्रकार अमुक एक प्रकार आउटपुट सापड़ते वॉज आइडेंटिफाइड कुछ आइडेंटिफाई हो सीड आना चाहिए यू कल्टिवेट इट इन अ पर्टिक्युलर एरिया वॉज येट टू हेपन सेकेंड स्टेज एंड मीन वाइल वील सी दैट इन द मैसोलिथिक एज दीज वर द बेसिक टूल्स एंड यूल सी दैट मोस्ट ऑफ दैम विल बी मेड आउट ऑफ बोन्स एंड स्टोन as such okay you see that these pointed things okay and uh, you have a few more of them here and here as well okay you, we can see that uh, it was more of okay when it was larger a handle was attached to it so that uh, they could be using it as such okay the list of uh, के वेरियस थिंग्स आयवरी एट टाइम्स वॉज ऑल्सो यूज आयवरी मे हस्ती दंत के अफकोर्स बोन्स वेगवेगे प्राणियों के उपयोगी पड़ती अभी जी हाड़े के दे स्टार्टेड यूजिंग दैट ड्यूरिंग दिस पर्टिक्युलर फेज एंड सॉरी दिस इज अ रिपीटेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट टू पॉइंट एंड देन यू सी दैट जे डब्ल्यू स्वेन Uh, he is of an opinion that uh, uh, man cultivated the first plants in the Middle East. Uh, that's around 7000 BC. Wild barley and uh, wheat on the borders of Iran and Iraq. When the Euphrates Nadi is there, we will probably see it in the next slide. Iran and Iraq, which is called as Mesopotamia, which is called as Mesopotamia. We refer to as Mesopotamian region. and uh, the prosperity of this region came gives it uh, the name mesopotamian era also also as such he also says that uh, neolithic egyptians uh, cultivated oats flax peas and other vegetables ata itar vales mhanje ek dha varsha purvi jar mi he lecture get asto tar oats mala tumhala samjhun sangav lagla asto but nowadays you see that diet conscious people very well know what oats is flax is basically a type of fiber aplya kade je ji matari ji matari cha kay manto apan te kes je manto ki not that we eat pan apan shalet astana rastya cha kade la ugavnari ti phulan mag tyachat na to asa typical kapsi punska yacha an to mi to kela तर तो उड़ा फ्लैक्स रिटेड रिट्स टू दैट पर्टिक्युलर फैमिली इट्स नॉट एक्जैक्टली कॉटन बट इट्स सिमिलर टू दैट एंड देन पीज मे अपने वाटाने आचबरबर दे यूज टू कल्टिवेट अदर वेजिटेबल्स ऑल्सो वाइल दिस वॉज हेपनिंग इन इजिप्ट मेसोपोटेनियन कल्टिवेटेड बीन्स लेंदिल्स एंड कैरट कैरट्स ऑफकोर्स मीन्स गाजर तुम बीन्स के बीन्स लोन तो Anyway, the date palm is uh, the native Khazura chizad is native to Arabia and Mesopotamia, and uh, olive is uh, basically olive oil. So the Aajkal far vapor la jata ya cha madhe jeevana madhe karan ta cha madhe fat kam ya sthe. It's olive. It, it's extracted from a fruit called as olive, which is a native of North Africa. Okay, you'll see that the plow was not invented. Until three uh, thousand BC, okay. मतलब नांगर जलापुर मानतो, okay. हाँ, पहले पांच बार पांच हजार वर्ष आती history uh, in the history of agriculture. It was not there. It was only it has been available only for the last five uh, thousand uh, years. I would say. We move ahead, and uh, if we check where did farming originate, as such, it is. You see, ki the lighter colors are uh, the more nearer colors to us, and the darker colors are older ones as such. And you'll see that uh, the darker colors come here, the lower uh, in in China, eastern parts of China, of course India, and I would say this part also should have been there. I don't know why it is not there. And uh, this, the fertile crescent, as it is called. ये मेसोपोटेमिया मानता इतना पहतो 
की हा फर्टाईल क्रेसेंट इथे इराण इराक आहे आय एम नॉट व्हेरी शुअर इफ दिस इज द राईट पोझिशन टू मार्क द फर्टाईल क्रेसेंट हा थोडासा अलीकडे हवा आणि यु सी दॅट द सब सहारन रिजन विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द साहिल रिजन यु विल फाईंड द मोर लेटर फॉर्म्स ऑफ ॲग्रिकल्चर or farming originated here uh you'll see that here you're going to have the uh, rivers which will flow into this the congo river is here as well and then you have ethiopia magek dam mi bolta na mantlo hota ki what enriches the waters of the nile with uh, minerals is basically uh, the min- the minerals from the ethiopian highlands so it's around the ethiopian highlands okay these are indicative he kai exact nahi hai that but that gives us an idea as to where these uh, could have been okay then you'll see that uh, the lower parts of the amazon lower manje at the mouth manat nahi hai but i am also not referring to the andes mountains okay you'll see that the base of the andes mountains and mala mait nahi tumhala dhavit brazil hota ka nahi gili 5 varsha brazil hai i don't know बट त्या पुस्तकामध्ये ॲमेझॉनिया म्हणजे मिडल पोर्शन जो आहे ॲमेझॉन नदीचा दॅट्स कॉल्ड ॲज ॲमेझॉनिया ॲज सच अँड देन यू हॅव मेसो अमेरिका मेक्सिकोमध्ये मधला एरिया इज ऑल्सो नोन फॉर दॅट ऑफकोर्स इट्स ओल्डर ॲज कम्पेअर टू दीज रिजन्स अदर रिजन्स एज सच अँड देन यू हॅव इस्टर्न यू एस यू सी दॅट कॅरेक्टरिस्टिकली all these regions have been supported by a, a regular supply of water at least they have a major river somewhere near by agdi the tumi pahila the vango and the yangtzes the ganga brahmaputra delta and then you have the euphrates here and then of course you have the congo and the other rivers here you have the amazon in south america you have the rio grande river in mexico uh, and of course we also have the Mississippi Missouri Delta here as such so water availability of water uh and it's it's and it's not necessarily and only related to uh rainfall okay it is it is farming is uh uh the developed form of farming is definitely related to availability of water if a major river nearby as such is something that we need to understand in this process if you see the timeline of agriculture mhanje yachat zara pictorial mhanje start uh, i would say a graphical format okay uh, it is believed that 11000 to 10000 years ago agriculture practiced was practiced in egypt and uh, mesopotamia uh, by 9000 years before present it had come down to asia it went down down to new guinea islands down near indonesia in these years as such uh it is believed that it shifted to the sub saharan africa sub saharan is this part of africa okay sahara cha south la jaye that's called as sub saharan around 5000 years uh before present and then uh in in the more recent years it is supposed to be uh shifted to the uh, americas okay so that is the timeline of agricultural development we could say and uh, then we come to a very interesting development uh, karl saw is uh, uh, an agricultural scientist and he uh, made some very interesting points and claims and uh, he says that uh, agriculture while it is believed in this that it it came up in mesopotamia okay uh, there could would not of course there could be an argument with egypt also uh, but he believes that uh, it is uh, not very easy for uh, agriculture to have originated in uh, in regions originated in regions or among people where shortage of food was not must you see that these are desert regions these are desert regions so he was of an argument that uh, no uh, something like uh, farming which requires innovation Uh, would not have come from the minds of people who were facing difficulties as far as availability of water is concerned he says that uh, 
for conduction of experiments like farming and irrigation, etc., you require a diversity because you travel small distances here and there, and you come across something that is that is done differently. The process, uh, or or there is something like uh, farming, but uh, the process of farming is differently because of uh, a difference in <laughs> relief or a difference in climate. Okay, and thus he says that for conducting such experiments, diversity in relief and climate was very very necessary, which again was not an easy thing to be found in the fertile crescent. Uh, he said that ancient cultivators would not have been settled in regions such as big river valleys because there was a danger of floods. Okay. And uh, he further says that agriculture uh, would have originated in regions where there was an abundance of trees. Okay, Because trees will show you that there is some supply and availability of water. Uh, you would not have had trees in the a fertile crescent to that particular extent. And uh, he further says that uh, instead of those who had, now you see that you when we speak about agriculture and history of farming, etc., man before that was a hunter, hunter and gatherer. So the implements that he was probably using uh, were pointed and sharpened uh, implements. Okay. So he says that uh, possibly people who were using pointed and sharp implements uh, would not have had thought of uh, uh, cultivating land as such. Instead, those who had uh, axe-like uh, implements uh, and lived in forests might have been the originators of uh, agriculture. Uh, it is also imperative that the originator of agriculture must have led a sedimentary, sedentary life because it is not possible that kitumi ekadikani kahi bija pertai ani maktumi hunting sathe nigun jatai karan techi tumhala niga lakhay lagte okay the crops that you have sowed or the seeds you have sown in a particular region would have required uh, i would say proper teji kaalji lehavi lagte tumhala particularly when you are cultivating uh, crops like weaker crops, I would say, like cereals, etc. And that is why if you are away for hunting purposes, then the crop could have been destroyed. This is the argument that Karl Sauer gives uh, to, to uh, claim that uh, though people say, and we may have proofs, but then uh, it's, it's, it's highly difficult that uh, Agriculture may have originated in a region like the Mesopotamian region as such. And uh, here we have a map which shows uh, uh, the emergence of agriculture. I'll put it up for enlargement. We'll just look here first. Okay, these colors show again. You'll see that the darker colors okay, will be the older parts. And the as you come further down, lighter colors you see that uh, we'll start with india and uh, you'll see that around india the okay, agriculture has emerged around uh, 3000 other hmm. uh, hmm. 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 figures far confusing ahe kai thikani tumhi 7000 varsha manta hai ani tich area amhala uh, 5000 years bc ashi sudha diste jithe bc add kelele ase before christ त्याच्यामध्ये ही आत्ताची 2000 वर्ष जी आहेत ही ऍड करणं अपेक्षित आहे आणि त्यामुळे हे लाल कलर इथे जो दिसतोय तो टोटल 7000 होईल 5000 प्लस आत्ताचे 2000 म्हणजे गेली 2000 वर्ष ओके सो यू हॅव टू बी व्हेरी केअरफुल व्हेन यू अंडरस्टँड दिस इन बीसी असेल तर त्याच्यानंतर 2000 जडा बिफोर प्रेझेंट म्हणजे आजच्या तारखेत ना तुम्ही त्या तारखेपर्यंत जाल तर त्याचे 7000 वर्ष होते आले लक्षात आणि 0 BC पासून तुम्ही त्या वर्षापर्यंत तर त्याचे 5000 आजच्या तारखेपर्यंत खेचायचं असेल तर त्याच्यात तुम्हाला 2000 वर्ष यू विल हैव टू ऍड टू दैट एज सच ओके सो यू विल सी दैट इट इज द इंडस डेल्टा एंड दैट्स व्हाई आई बिलीव दैट द अर्लियर मैप वाज अ बिट इनकरेक्ट ओके यू विल सी दैट इट्स द इंडस रीजन द इंडस वैली सिविलाइजेशन एज इट इज कॉल्ड 
and then you will see that the upper courses of the Ganga here are the oldest and then you will see that agriculture split to other parts as such okay uh, the greenish color which is around uh, 3000 years and uh, before before Christ that means Atspasna Pasa years ago uh, you will see that uh, it is literally whole of India uh, to the south of Godavari, we can assume that this could be the Krishna or the Godavari. Uh, I would say if we go into the geog real geographical context, it would be probably a river separating these margins as such. So uh, this is this southern India, uh, probably 4,000 years before present. Okay, so we will have to read this map in that particular way. And uh, the crops which were grown, okay, you'll see banana, grapes, olives, barley, corn, potato, rice, cotton, wheat, sorghum, manje, jawar, and soya beans. These were the major crops which were taken. And uh, then uh, from, from, from India, let us go to the China part. And uh, it is here that uh, you'll see that the northern part, this is of course the uh, Wang Ho River or so-called as the Yellow River. And uh, you'll see that it's only after some time that agriculture shifts to the Yangtze River. This is the Yangtze River. Uh, this is the, of course the Iravadi River here. Okay. And then this is the Mekong River. Okay, all this area develops much after the Indus and the Wang Ho civilizations come up okay you'll see that uh, exclusively this the taklamakan desert okay that's uh, uh, tibet etc is excluded because of uh, the dryness and then towards the north again you have these and then as we move towards central parts of asia okay you'll see that uh, agriculture is practiced along the margins of the mediterranean sea the black sea the caspian sea Okay, and uh, the crescent that we were referring to, this is the Euphrates River, and then you have the Tigris River also. And uh, what are they cultivating here? They are cultivating barley here. Okay, and similarly, you'll see that uh, the banks of the Nile River here are being cultivated accordingly. And uh, that's a phasing out. And then it spreads to other regions much after that, Azunek Hazar version. But you'll see that uh, the banks of the Nile uh, have been cultivated and uh, they have been cultivating, uh, I would say, Jawar here. These are the Ethiopian highlands here. This is the Ethiopian highlands. Okay, you'll see that major part of the African continent is um, a devoid of any early agriculture but here you come to the sub-saharan region the sahel region and you see that the congo etc these are the rivers so our claim that uh, it's very necessary that you require water through a major river source becomes uh, for farming okay is is uh, supplemented here as well okay as far as europe is concerned it comes much much later okay then, uh, as far as Americas are concerned, it could be true, but then see that very small areas are seen here as far as old agricultural practices are concerned. As the rest of America, it seems, was not much used as far as uh, agriculture is concerned, agricultural practices is concerned. Uh, with the opinion that Karl Saur has, uh, he comes up with uh, a few observations. Okay, he says that uh, instead of uh, the Middle East, the Mesopotamian region or the Fertile Crescent, etc., etc., or the, uh, say, say, so to say, the Tigris and the Euphrates valleys, as such, he says that agriculture must have originated in Southeast Asia. When he says Southeast Asia, he includes India, and you'll see later that he has a lot of belief as far as a lot of agricultural practices may have come 
out of Indian, the Indian subcontinent as such. Okay, so, and when he says India, it's something that starts all along. Uh, when he says Southeast Asia, he see it starts from the Indus and it extends all the way to the Mekong. Magashimi, Yanaden, so location tomorrow, that's more the color. Uh, we can go back to it okay, once again and uh, I can enlarge it for you once again. Okay, so all this area is Southeast Asia. Okay, this is called as the Indo China Peninsula. This is called as the Southeast Asian region. Okay, so we'll come back here. And uh, he says that uh, uh, agriculture will originate only in those people, where in only in those areas where you have a considerable variety of relief. Uh, climate is moderate and there is an adequate uh, rainfall, which he says that this region has through. Uh, monsoons as such. Uh, the origin of agriculture, he also says further, has an intimate relationship with uh, fishing. Now, why he does so is a very strange condition, but he insists that uh, agriculture is uh, very closely associated with uh, uh, fishing as an activity. Okay. Uh, document taking, you'll read through it. Thoda sa teni, thoda sa explanation so uh, you'll see that he believes that uh, relief is necessary and that to a variety in this relief, climate also needs to change or rather it needs to be moderate. And that's why he says uh, the fertile crescent Mesopotamia. Uh, is is not the right area where probably this may have started. Now, uh, he, according to me, he could have been wrong basically because uh, when we look at Mesopotamia today, uh, we say it we we look at it to be a very dry region. But uh, ten thousand years ago, maybe the climates were different, and uh, the Euphrates and the Tigris River had a regular source of uh, uh, water through a considerable amount of rain falling here. We don't know. We'll have to conclude it. Uh, we'll have to look for it. But possible reason is that you had rain then 10,000 years ago there. And uh, it could have been possible. Okay. Source is nothing doing. It is necessarily Southeast Asia. Uh, he further says that uh, domestication of animals starts has started from uh, Southeast Asia, okay, and uh, uh, humans first learned the planting of saplings before they learned the techniques of growing plants from uh, seeds. Je, suruvatila apur manto na ki zadaat se ek chota sa bhag roon the so planting planting karay so B madna ek hada zard nigna hi technique ji hoti ki vadaona. And then you have, uh, 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 he says that uh, plants like sago, sago manje uh, basically uh, ek variety sago chi manje apla sabudar. Okay, there are similar types of varieties, sago plants, and then bamboo and then sugarcane grew first in a wild form in India and Indonesia, Indochina, sorry, Indochina. And uh, Halu halu, you'll see that there was a, a, a lot of change that was introduced in these uh, as such. So, thus you'll see that uh, sugarcane in India, varieties in India are different to sugarcane varieties in China, and others, even sago varieties, are different. Uh, now, it's very interesting to note why he uh, argues that uh, fishing would have been a very uh, intimate in, in a very intimate relation uh, with uh, farming as such. Okay. He says that uh, one, you have plenty of rivers to give you a lot of uh, uh, fish. He also says that uh, there is a long coastline in this whole region which could give you fish as well. And uh, more importantly, he says that uh, these people seem to have a balanced uh, diet. And uh, uh, when you say balanced diet, you require fat and protein. And uh, this comes from animal meat and from fish as such. 
and that's a consequence he says that uh, probably uh, the, these people did practice fishing as an activity along with uh, uh, agriculture current agriculture only does not give you it will give you carbohydrates etc etc but it does not give you the proteins and fats as such so he relates to the fact that these people could be in a practice of uh, eating meat meat particularly fish as well as such then he further says that the animals that have been found in southeast asia are dogs chickens and ducks and herding animals consisted of sheep and goat okay this means that uh, you'll see that all the animals are smaller in size okay you don't have a mention of the cow you don't have the mention of the buffalo okay uh, of course these are views of saw okay uh, other scholars could be referring to different aspects then uh, he says that it's plants and animals spread from southeast asia to countries and islands of the pacific uh, towards the south and the southeast from here and then he says they spread to china they spread to japan and countries of africa and uh, they could not sp spread further basically because as you uh, went into higher latitudes these latitudes started getting colder particularly in the winter season as such uh, he says that paddy paddy manje aplo bhat sheti bamboo banana taro taro he atta mala sapadla nahi i'll check, check. yam he, he, that also is a type of fruit uh, were brought in the beginning from india and indochina and uh, these underwent sufficient changes ke tumhi ekadi gosto uchlun dusri thikani lavta mhanle var kahi kalantarane it gets adjusted to that local climate and he, that local climate will bring in a few changes in that particular region say for example from a there is a juicy fruit and uh, you shift that juicy fruit from its native place to an area where in you have less amount of rainfall kalantarane asa honar hai ki tyachat asnara jo juice hai to obviously kami honar hai and the species will change you bring it to an area which is uh, higher rainfall now two things could happen in that particular case the juice in that particular fruit could, could increase further but the rainfall could dilute the concentration mhanje ambat asel tar te jara kami ambat hoil god asel tar te thoda sa god kami god hoil kiwa vadel sudha so these changes uh, happen due to uh, different climates that uh, these uh, uh, these these agricultural uh, um, crops traveled to then you'll see that in the forested regions of tropical africa excluding sudan and east africa women might have initiated agriculture by ho ho je thodi si kudali sarkha asta te ho or dug the land with pointed sticks okay tar te uh, ashe tokeri kaatha ghun tyachyamade khadde karayche ani tyachyamade bi perach the plants of the far east did not spread towards the west in the west agriculture originated largely with the help of seeds an important aspect a uh, mediterranean agriculture that was dependent on cultivation of fruits learned is initial methods from india ithe sudha uh, indian methods tithe poslele distat aplyala ancient mediterranean agriculture was started with dates with dates manje khajur and uh, then you have olive okay, figs je anjir okay are of particular importance because they flourished uh, through grafting grafting manje uh, uh, kalam karan kalam karna jala apan manto that is called as grafting okay and particularly fig he je ahe he apan manto na ki kay man te jhadan chi nav ahe that family which is called uh, say for example vada cha jhad mana ki va umra cha jhad umbar je ahe it belongs to the fig family ही झाडं अशी आहेत की तुम्ही त्याचं एक एखादं टगळ तोडलीत म्हणजे एखादी छोटी ब्रांच तोडलीत त्याची आणि ती पेरली त्याला फुलं पानं फुटतात आणि मग ते मोठं होऊन त्याला हे सो त्याला त्याला सुद्धा आपण ग्राफ्टिंग म्हणू की एक त्याची फांदी तोडायची आणि पेरायची आणि त्याचं झाड होणार आहे वगैरे वगैरे फर्दर सॉर्ट सेज दॅट इन ट्रॉपिकल अमेरिका पर्टिक्युलरली मेक्सिको अँड सेंट्रल 
America, agriculture originated through seeds. Okay, so now we know that basically uh, there are upon Pakta, Dazar Varsha, Dazar Varsha, and Yala Suda, Vigli process. I Techa were moreover related activities. I had hunting Karnare, he agriculture is Halek and I Yachavad the Wadahi, then Chavar were as Lele, Survati Chaprani Jahit, a Chotia size chai, as a Vigla Gosti Dista, grafting Mudna Honara Badalekahe, Ani. B uh, Perun Honara, a particular type of agriculture. Hai. And uh, he says that in old world, okay, we'll see that uh, agriculture was practiced through seeds, not China, Mana, Western India. Okay, and he Western India, she practiced Jyoti. Uh, this was then copied in other parts all the way to Eastern Mediterranean region and Ethiopia, Ethiopia city also. So uh, that's about. Uh, what Saur had to say. Uh, in diversity, when we speak about the diversity of crops, we'll see that uh, uh, there is a lot of diversity of crops when it comes to uh, West Asia. Okay, you can see. Uh, otherwise, you'll see that uh, this diversity is found in, uh, I, I would say that uh, this diversity is more near the equatorial region. As you go away from the equatorial region, the diversity goes down and you'll see that i would i would uh, make an observation here that when it comes to north america because north america was uh, 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 was was taken up for agricultural practices much much later uh, the number of crops cultivated were in the form of monoculture and extensively and that's why the number the, the diversity is significantly less now this may not necessarily be a natural phenomena but you'll see that because agriculture here was intensively human induced uh, the monoculture practice could have restricted the number of crops in uh, the continent of north america as, uh, as as compared to that you'll see you 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 can observe a huge amount of diversity uh, crop diversity all the way into the northern parts of the world that you can see here in europe and uh, central asia also Okay, so that's very interesting. Uh, you you could further go into uh, analyzing this uh, uh, map in further detail. Say, for example, as far as coconut is concerned, you don't see coconut in many other parts. You'll see it in Asia. So probably it's a very interesting thing. Okay, on on the other hand, you'll see that something like cotton is uh, something that is seen in the western world more in americas more but uh, later on you'll see that it is it is in it is grown in these areas also so you can just go into um, uh, analyzing these various uh, uh, availability of various fruits in various parts of the world as well that's it's this is a very interesting uh, uh, map i would say okay we, we need to first go into what are the uh, so to say symbols used for various fruits here and then you could go into de in a detailed analysis of what are the fruits you see that coconut one two three no other parts will you find coconut that doesn't mean you don't have coconut but these regions are known for that particular product origin and primary regions Okay, so it's more of here, and then we could go into uh, some other crop which we don't find now. Uh, let me check with this this crop. I think it's tomato. Let's see. Uh, yes, here it's tomato. Here you'll see that uh, you don't see it in Asia, but uh, you see it in. Uh, the Andes regions, the tomatoes here as such. So it's a very interesting thing to go into the de details of these as such. And before we end for today, uh, we need to look into uh, what are the latest developments that have happened recently as far as agriculture is concerned. Uh, you'll see these that till 1940s, People used to stay around their farms as such. Okay, you see that 40s onwards, uh, people started moving off the farms and their connection with their food source gradually started growing. 
uh, going off as such. 50s, you'd see that packaged goods thrived because of innovations in food processing and storage and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, frozen dinners, as they call it. Okay. Because uh, uh, a lot of produce which was cheaper, uh, the production of these produce, in particularly the form of meat, was. Uh, uh, Say, say, I would say, handed over to countries of the southern continents, say Africa, Australia, Argentina, which exported meat and meat products, okay, in a frozen format. As such, sixty-two is very important because Rachel Carlson published uh, *Silent Spring*, okay, uh, because by this time, agriculture had started using uh, pesticides, so chemicals had entered into the agriculture as such. Then 1971, uh, sustainable agriculture came to be an important aspect. Then uh, uh, you'll see that 73, California, which is a state in uh, western parts of United States of America, uh, they went in for the Certified Organic uh, Farmers Organization was formed. Uh, they strictly started looking into organic farming as such. Uh, then uh, 79 non-organic or uh, non-profit organically grown products were grown in Oregon. Oregon is again a state which is towards the northern parts of the United States of America. Uh, then you can see that uh, here you can see Carlo Perini okay, found founded the slow food organization now what is this slow food 1986 uh, you see that since uh, 1966 that's uh, uh, the green revolution and of course the high yield variety okay uh, they started cultivating crops faster and faster and new varieties uh, the the time taken for harvest was shrinking uh, this was a move to get away from that as such. Then in the 90s, uh, people started demanding for local food, fresh food, fresh, and that too, organic food. And uh, farmers started getting that into the markets in around 1990s. Uh, school lunches started in uh, 2000 as such, not for India, and this is for uh, more of the developed countries as such. 2007, uh, GMO. Anybody knows what GMO stands for? Okay, non-GMO. Okay, GM, genetically modified. Okay, okay so non-GMO was in demand, or has been, has come into, uh, say, agricultural practice till 2007, and around 2010 plant-based, plant-centric, and uh, vegetable-forward entered restaurants and uh, lexicon, uh, as, uh, restaurants and lexicon as such. So this is, uh, say, what has been happening for the last uh, uh, 60, 70, or six, six, seven, eight decades as far as the history of farm to table movement is concerned. Okay, hey, These are milestones, I would say as far as agricultural practices are concerned. Uh, I thought it to be a very important thing. History tapan karu chayat, purchi po yacha pude chuda history hai. But uh, in the last century, okay, while we speak about 10,000 years, we need to speak about the last 100 years also. How agriculture and agricultural products have changed. Are human beings taking care of what they are growing? Are they actually worried about what is happening with the quality of output, etc.? Uh, can be looked into these uh, last seven, eight decades as such. Uh, with this, uh, I would uh, stop this and uh, I'm done with uh, the lecture for today. And if you have any queries, you could ask me those queries uh, as such. Anything that you missed out on what we were doing today, you don't agree with what we have been doing today, uh, you can surely ask or add to it or counter it. Uh, 